It is now my very real pleasure to invite John Campbell to address the graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, John Campbell. Kia ora everyone. It's so lovely to see you all. What a wonderful occasion. Hide in my welcome, beautifully welcomed on um, in celebration of uh, the Indigenous people of New Zealand and also in celebration of something that we cherish very dearly, which is uh, our culture. And I'm looking out there and I've been told that there's a percentage of you, 20 or 30% roughly, who are uh, foreign students, right? And I'd like, on behalf of the people of New Zealand now, to invite you to stay. <laughs> don't, 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 don't go home. Okay, this is home now. You look like a splendid group of people and I think if we're looking at our future then it's a pretty fantastic and assured future indeed. So none of you are allowed to leave and your passports will be removed at the door on, <laughs> on the way out. Hare mai everyone, welcome. Graduands, the very proud families and friends of graduands, the excellent staff of the Faculty of Design and Creative Technologies, the big wigs of AUT, welcome to you all and a heartfelt a really heartfelt congratulations to the people who would come up on the stage today and receive your degrees. 14 PhDs, that is extraordinary. Uh, we are all here today, mums, dads, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, grandparents, friends, partners, all of us to celebrate your dreams and your work. You are, there's a little, two little kids in the very front row there who are just delightful and, are making, and who are making love heart signs and someone before. You are absolutely beautiful. So when your graduate comes on the stage, I'm expecting you to go berserk. And I'll join you. Uh, we are here today to celebrate your dreams and your work. Dreams make you go to university, but work gets you through it. Some of you went to AUT directly from school. Some of you went to AUT after a different kind of life entirely. A stop take occurred and a decision to change tracks and do something brave and new. To all of you, no matter where in life you are today, today is a day to feel immensely proud. You made this happen. You are here because of you. I want to stress that because I do recall myself the strange kind of limbo that can occur after you finish university. There you are, brilliant and magnificent and full of the energy that comes with achievement, and there the world is grey and robotic and potentially unmoved. Ignore the world and its e or misery, because what got you here today what made you take student loans, work part-time jobs, study, sit up late to finish assignments, give up other opportunities, sacrifice things, not get as drunk as you'd like at a mate's 21st, work and work and work, all of that is in you now. The ability to dream and realise that dream is in you. And today is both a celebration of that and a reminder of that too. You can do it, and we all know that, because you are here because you have done it. 30 years ago, I graduated from Victoria University. I had no idea what I was going to do, absolutely none. And here I am now, age 51, and the years in between have been so miraculous and so full of luck and wonder that I can't even begin to tell you how much is possible. Anything can happen, and everything. And if you believe in yourself and don't give up and view any setbacks simply as speed bumps and no more than that, you will have a career that honours the dreams that took you to AUT. You will. One of the things about my old job that I loved, truly loved, was that the auto queue operators in the studio at TV3 were most often students from AUT's communications course. 17 years I was in that studio, five nights a week for 17 years, somewhere in the region of 4,000 programs I fronted. And at that time I worked every night with a total of roughly 40 AUT students. On my final night at TV3, when I made my farewell speech, I singled those young people out. And here's why. They arrived at TV3 with such possibility, with such hope and energy, with such idealism and with such a profound lack of cynicism that whenever I felt myself spiralling towards something less than I wanted to be, I only needed to look at them to be reminded of what mattered. That is what you offer, possibility. 
and there isn't a person on the planet who doesn't want that. I have two children. I was driving the oldest to school yesterday, she's 14, and she was teasing me about the fact she's only got three years of school left, and then I'll be really old. And I thought about the world she'll be entering. Conventional wisdom would suggest it's tough, and yes, it is tough. But never before in human history has change been so complete and so fast. The internet didn't exist when I started in journalism in 1989. Right in New Zealand, where I had my first job, still had a clippings library. Some of you will have no idea where that, what, what that is. You used to wander into the library if you're doing a story on the balance of trade, for example. You would ask for the information they had. A librarian would wander off. You would wait. And you would wait a bit longer, and you'd wait a bit longer. And finally, the librarian would come back with an old manila folder full of cut-out articles, cut out with scissors, from a newspaper. And you would be given them. Some of them would be 17 years old. Every single person they referred to was long dead. And you would go and sit down at your desk and try and make a story out of that stuff. Now, that was it. 26 years on, that seems like a scene from a very old movie. You are becoming graduates in the colour world that is replacing that black and white movie. You have been taught in it. You have succeeded in it. You are products of it. Consider this, in the entire 50,000 year history of what we now know as the human race, since the birth of behavioural modernity and the development of language and symbolic culture, people have only been graduating with your understanding and insight for a single generation. One generation after 50,000 years. Yes, the world is tough, but there is no one better equipped to cope with it than you. You are not obsolete. You belong to this world and you are graduating in it with skills and understanding and expertise that the entire human race before you for 50,000 years did not have and could not possibly understand. That's you. Modern. But study is not only about vocation, it's also about your mind. And as graduates of the Faculty of Design and Creative Technologies, your mind is now equipped to see the world and describe the world and shape the world in unique and special ways. Back in the 80s when I was at Vic, and the older members of the staff behind me here will remember this, we'd just come out of the awful Springbok tour and Rob Muldoon was presiding like a schoolyard bully over a country that was either cowed and compliant or terribly angry. And I was at university and I discovered poetry. Not much of a discovery, you might think. The first poem that I discovered that completely changed my life, bizarrely, was by a man called William Carlos Williams. It was called The Red Wheelbarrow, and it went, so much depends upon the red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. That was the poem. It's not much of a poem, people said, when Williams wrote it in the 60s. Poems are by Shakespeare, and even if they're not by Shakespeare, they at least have the decency to rhyme. But it was wonderful to me. Absolutely wonderful because of its audacity, its cheek, and because it spoke of reclaiming language, of a literature that, could, that didn't alienate with its pomposity and self-regard and drew you in and made you smile and made the most humble thing important and worthy of attention. And then I discovered E.E. E. Cummings in a poem called Buffalo Bill's Defunct, and I'm going to read it to you now because it changed my life. I don't does anyone know this poem? No one knows this poem. It's quick. It goes, Buffalo Bill's defunct who used to ride a water-smooth silver stallion and break one, two, three, four clay pigeons, just like that. Jesus, he was a beautiful man. And what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Deer? Now, what Cummings did in that poem was he joined the words one, two, three, four, five together. He just made them one word, no gap between them. No one had ever done that before, ever, in the entire history of literature, because that's how Buffalo Bill fired. Bang, 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 bang. And I thought, how on earth did he think to do that? Why did he think to do that? How did he know? How did he make language that replicated gunfire? It's a small thing in this room. There are engineers, there are PhD students in this room who will think, what is that man going on about? But to me, it opened a door that introduced me to a love of words and an understanding of what you could do with the most simple words, how you could tell stories with them, how you could change the way people saw the world with them, how you could make people connect with simple things. That's what I learned at university. And all of you will have something in you that equates to that. All of you will be richer and more complete because of what you learned. Good luck.
graduates with what lies ahead. But your luck began when you decided to go to AUT. Your luck increased every time you did an assignment and passed. Your luck got greater every time you did something as well as it deserved, as well as you could. And today is a formal manifestation of that. This is your day. You earned it. You made it happen. You deserve it. So, the graduates are down here, and I've been talking to you, but one final point on behalf of the families and friends of those graduating today. When my children do well at something, schoolwork or dance or rugby, and there's some small form of public acknowledgement, my boy is player of the day and the St Peter's under 12 or something that magnificent, I feel so proud I could burst. To the families and friends here today who perhaps supported younger students or encouraged older students or who have come from a long way away to be here or made sacrifices so this could happen, I know how proud you must be. And so on your behalf, I'd like to end by saying to the graduates here today, well done, you did it. You made this happen and we are proud of you. And it is our pleasure and privilege to be here to celebrate your achievements on this very special today. Enjoy it. You deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, can we please have a huge round of applause for our graduates. <laughs>